What's up guys? It's Wednesday, June 26th. Gonna do a little freezer situation update and I'm mainly recording this for insurance purposes. So I don't know if I'm gonna put this in the vlog or a standoff video. However, as you can see, it's scarily quiet in here. The freezer units are not running. It's still 25 degrees in here right now, but I think it's gonna go up about five, 10 degrees an hour. We are no meat in here, all the meat's out. I'll show you the reefer trailers later. Guy's gonna come and clean the whole freezer tomorrow, spray everything, and then he's gonna come on Friday and do the foam, and then we can turn the freezer back on, hopefully with better insulation and be okay. Uh, thankfully, the insurance is covering the freezer replacement unit cost. The only issue is um, it's gonna take me, well, it's gonna take me a little while to get that money. I can put everything on the credit card. The bigger problem is all the HVAC guys are really busy, and, um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna have to see what happens. Uh, so I'm trying to like, I'm trying to shop around, get the best price, not go crazy. Even though it's covered by insurance, you know, this first half of the insurance payment, I already have to spend to pay back all the repairs I just did. So we're still not in a great spot, but at least the insurance is covering most of it. So we have the freezer all emptied out. I would say a good two days of work for like five guys. It took us to get all that meat organized and uh, and get it ready to take out. Yeah, that was all we really did today. We sent the rest of the orders Wednesday morning, got all of them ready, and we're gonna try to do this kind of seamlessly so anyone placing an order doesn't even know what happened. Well, you guys know what happened because you're watching the video, but we rented a forklift it's like a thousand dollars a month, which in the context of how much money I hemorrhage on my business, not that big of a deal. Uh, we had to get this to, to load the, the reefer trailers up with the meat. So this is the second one that we got. Zero degrees is what I like to see. I'm actually paying my guys to, uh, to check on it every three, four hours because they live right up the street. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? So. Uh, they're they're gonna come every three or four hours and just make sure the engines are running on the reefers and uh, And if there is an issue they can call up the service company 24-hour truck service This is a swing door So, you know if you you have to open the doors Away from the dock to back it up to the loading dock because you can't open the, the doors of the truck while it's against the building so what we did here was we opened up the doors and I took the pallets from that dock with the forklift and put them on this truck. I mean, there were like 15 pallets. I was driving that thing for an hour and it's like 90 degrees out, so I was not having any fun. So I'm hoping that when we have to put the meat back in the freezer on uh, on Saturday or whenever, that we can get the guy to back this up to the dock so we can just wheel the pallets out, but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. This is the second reefer that we've had since uh, last week, this one is at four degrees, so still cooling off a little bit, but today was really hot, so both creepers are running, both appear to be operating good. This one is, is backed right up to the building, so we can actually take meat in and out of there if we wanted to. Now we're renting two of these, which is a hundred bucks a day in rental fees, probably a hundred uh, in gas, maybe more, and then probably I think he charges me for the engine hours too, and they're on continuous, so I think it's uh, it's probably three to four hundred dollars a day just for renting these. So, oh, and that doesn't include the the, the fee for getting them here and back is four hundred each. So it's a lot of money. Hopefully, after all this is hopefully after we solve we resolve all this, maybe I send this bill to the insurance company and they'll cover that too. But. Since they cover so much, I, I'm not really as worried about whether they're paying for this or not. Uh, so we have, because I have like, you know, we have an oil company coming every to fill this up with diesel. It's, it's super, super expensive, but that's what we have to do. Uh, so hopefully when we get this spray foamed and we turn those other freezer units back on, the problem is like, I'm still not gonna be, I'm not gonna be okay in there until we get another unit installed. And I don't know if, when that's gonna happen because as I was saying earlier, all these HVAC guys in this heat wave are so busy, they don't really have time to do uh, new installations because they're busy 
saving their current customers like you know oh my freezer went down oh this all that they have a lot of emergency situations whereas i'm i guess i'm okay you know it's not like you know we have reefers here the meat's on the reefer if the re hypothetically speaking i'm 100 percent perfectly fine the meat is on a reefer it's safe <laughs> granted my luck is the reefer fails but uh, that's the thing like we, we hypothetically have perfectly operating systems to keep the meat cold aka the reefer trucks so compared to someone that has an emergency that doesn't have a reefer truck or didn't rent a reefer truck that's probably what these hvac guys are focusing on so uh first goal get this spray foamed and honestly you know the freezer panels are old my guy is telling me i'm losing uh, a lot of uh a lot of cold air because of that so we'll see if the thirteen thousand dollars to spray foam this is worth it because most other companies wanted thirty thousand this was if it was more than 20 i would not have done it 100 percent. but we're in this building for now i don't know how long i'm going to be here probably at least a few years who knows and then even if i do resell the building everything's going to be like up and functioning so once we get this spray foamed we got to get another freezer unit installed probably evaporators on that wall this th these two units have to be fixed we have to put new heating coils in the evaporator on the left this is the old reliable one that i might replace later this year just to get a new one in and this is this these are the broken evaporators and this is uh this is kind of it's difficult to know what to do and I'll, I'll get a little technical and not as entertaining here but uh that the compressor is a unit the most expensive unit inside the condenser the condenser is the name for the entire outdoor freezer unit box thing that big metal box that has everything in it the fans and the compressor it's called a condenser so that condenser outside is so old that the replacement compressor is like 12 or 13 thousand because they don't really have them anymore so there's no real point of replacing the compressor because the condensing the whole unit is cheaper it's the same price it'd be the same price to put a new unit in outside as it would to be to swap the compressor so we know what to do outside the problem is that condenser that you put in has to match these they're called evaporators so one of those is older one of those is actually newer the older one on the right has a slight leak on the top of it so then the question is okay well you have all this line work in place i guess you should just take out everything and put in all new stuff however those evaporators right now are hooked up to another condensing unit on the roof that was used for that glass walk-in door i told you guys about this last week so it's kind of saving our freezer so i'm not really i'm not really sure how we're going to transition this i don't know how we're going to do it because if i spray foam this and I get the meat back in the freezer on Saturday to resume business operate because I can't operate the business out of a reefer trailer. I can't. If I had three reefer trailers, maybe I could. Like if I had another reefer trailer with a rolling door and I put it on the dock and we organize the meat better in the reefer trailers, maybe I could operate the business, but that's not feasible. Um, so you know, yeah, we're gonna have to come, we're just gonna have to put the meat back in here on Saturday, hope it gets to cold temperature, and then. Um, from it from an install perspective uh i guess we just try to get everything installed and then uh and then do a swap over as, as quickly as possible but once this is foamed and we have a brand new unit in here then basically nothing can go wrong you know um so the purpose of me filming this for insurance is hey we got the reefers we got all the meat in the reefers where we're spray foaming this to re-insulate it so that the current situation when we put the meat back in is safer we're trying to get everything fixed and we're going to try to get a new unit as soon as possible but i'll say it again until until we get a new condensing unit installed and new evaporators installed i mean honestly that one new unit is probably more would probably do more uh, chilling than all the all three of these units combined so that's kind of what we need to do to be in a safe spot and then once that happens, then I can worry about, oh, do I want to replace this? Do I want to replace that? Probably not. Just, just let it go. That's the minimum. Just get the new unit in, have the freezer spray foamed. Should be good for all of the rest of the duration I need to be here.
that's basically it. And one other thing we're gonna do that I guess isn't as, not really a priority, but on this wall here, we're gonna move. So we have the new hood for the kitchen vent. That fan next to it, which is not being used right now, was the old vent. So we're gonna take that fan that's not being used, put it on the wall here, and then we can have this meat room chilled because the, the coolers for this meat room here are hooked up to like this old refrigeration rack that requires about uh, six, $7,000 worth of uh, gas in it to operate. And it's way too big to operate anyway. I'd probably kill my electric bill. So instead of having to spend, you know, six, 7,000 in gas and 500 a month on the electric bill just to cool this room, spend just a few hundred bucks to move that fan over there and the wall and then turn it on and off. And then we have cold air coming from the freezer to chill this room, but of course, you know, the freezer has to be safe and running. I know we have plenty of cold air in there to even do that. It's out of the question right now. So we're gonna get this set up a little nicer for what we wanna do. And uh, and that should be that. So the, these next few weeks are gonna be, uh, are gonna be, uh, I guess a little frustrating. And I'll say it probably, I know I'm probably, I sound like a broken record repeating myself, but this is, you know, it's the work with these heat waves and not having these HVAC guys do this, I'm just in a really bad spot. Um, you know, th those those guys really took their time to to help me try to get that, that second unit out there up and running. And uh, they didn't really have the time to commit to it to really troubleshoot it and fix it. And uh, by the time we found out that the compressor needed to be swapped, you know, I was like, you know, let me let me shop around a few weeks. Let me explore my options. And as I was exploring my options, I actually filed the insurance claim at that point. I was like, all right, this needs to be replaced. We need to fix this. I'm screwed. I can't afford this. Then, because I, I already filed the insurance claim and I knew that the unit had to be replaced before the emergency even happened. Before before uh, the free, the other freezer units failed, I already had the insurance claim filed because I knew it was broken and needed to be replaced. Unfortunately, the heat waves came and, and we had all these issues. So yeah, this, this freezer, this freezer, all these glass doors here, the, um, I guess like the little flip doing acrobatics with my phone. That condensing unit that was used for this freezer is piped over to that freezer to kind of save it. So we'll see what happens. I'm just trying to, to just, save as much money as possible and uh because if i don't like my goal is to provide you guys with affordable stuff and help as many as people as possible so unfortunately the the grim reality of what i have to do is basically get as much money as possible and make sure it's 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 being used for the right things so a little hard to do when you try to sell your products as cheaply as possible but You know that there's there's different there's different degrees of it. You know, a lot when you have limited access to these HVAC people and they're all charging you out the ass and they're scamming you for parts and they're not even really fixing stuff. It's just it's a nightmare. It's it's a nightmare. It's not good. So we'll see how the next few weeks goes. But the only thing to really focus on now is let this guy spray foam this. Hopefully, when we turn those freezer units back on, we're at a really good temperature and. Uh, and we can kind of skate by for a few weeks before we get this new unit installed. So it is now Saturday. The first part of this video was filmed on Wednesday. So we got everything out of here, put it all on the reefers. You guys like these smoke alarms? I, I paid this guy just to change them. Oh, but we have a scissor lift, so I should actually use it to change the smoke alarms real quick because this guy was using the scissor lift to spray foam. So he came Thursday, cleaned everything yesterday, Friday, he did all the spray foam. So as you guys could see, we got two inches of foam all in the freezer. It actually looks like cleaner and newer now too. So we just gotta let the foam cure uh, for Saturday. I might let it cure all day Sunday too because we can't turn the freezer on tonight because uh, it might compromise the foam. So we could turn the freezer on Sunday morning, but even if we turn the freezer on Sunday morning, it's not gonna be a temperature until Monday. So we can't do anything until Monday. Therefore, I might just uh, wait until Sunday night to turn the freezer on, give the foam a full uh, 48 hours to cure. Uh, this was like $13,600 to spray foam this whole freezer, which is like, 
this guy gave me half the price of any other company. Otherwise, I would not have done it. So now when we turn these freezer units back on, even though they're broken and old, we should be safe at good temperature to operate until, uh, until we get the, the new unit installed, which thankfully the insurance did cover. Take another uh, quick look inside for you guys. So we got ceiling, walls, everything completely, I mean, completely spray foamed with two inches of foam. So uh, yeah, the freezer panels are 40 years old. This was kind of the best use of the funds. I'm not sure if, well, the best use of like funds to, from a, from a return perspective. So, you know, those panels are so old and the freezer is so large that we kind of need to spray foam it. Now, if we're talking about like the refrigerator, which is a little smaller, which doesn't have to be as cold, then it's probably not worth spending the, the four, five, six thousand dollars to spray foam it. But the, this freezer will have a very quick return. We got uh, everything out here. I'm going to have my guys, uh, we're going to pressure wash everything, clean it all down before we put it back in. And uh, even though we cleaned the freezer before we moved in, uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure to keep it really, really, really clean now and uh, get in there with vacuums and stuff, make sure everything's good. So I have the, the warehouse door open here. We got to air it out. Oh, dude, yesterday, these spray foam chemicals, even though I wasn't in the room, they were kind of like dissipating throughout the building. Dude, I was so out of it. Like I came in feeling pretty good yesterday. And after just inhaling that stuff for like, like the residual fumes for like an hour or two, I was just so out of it. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty dangerous, it's pretty toxic. So we're trying to air out the building as much as possible uh, today. And then we'll turn the freezer back on, we should be good. So we got that one reefer still out here. I've been paying my guys to, because they live up the street, to come down and check the reefer temperature every few hours. Yeah, so, so this one's at negative two degrees, so that's good. And then we got this other reefer I bought all new pallets um these were five bucks each which is actually kind of cheap like they're they're new they're clean they're pretty clean they're, they're pretty good condition pallets compared to a lot of the pallets we get in so i wanted to just put like all new pallets on the floor of that freezer so they're nice and clean and we're not just using like random old broken pallets uh so that was i mean only 150 bucks it's not that big of a deal reefer's got plenty of fuel in it this one is at negative one. So, reefers have been holding up. I'm gonna just hop on this forklift, get those pallets on the dock, and uh, I got a few other things to do today. So, uh, that's gonna be it for this kind of freezer update vlog video. The reason I wanted to make this was to show you guys, hey, uh, we're not gonna get the meat really back in the freezer until Monday, and it's 4th of July week. So I'm, I'm gonna try my best to get all the orders out to you guys as soon as possible. I think what we're gonna do is, uh, hopefully the freezer is at temperature by Monday morning after we turn it on Sunday night. We'll put all the meat in the freezer real quick. It shouldn't take too long, maybe an hour or two. And then after we get the meat in the freezer, we'll get all the extra ice orders and the express orders ready that we should be able to ship out on Monday. So we should be able to get the express and extra ice orders out on Monday and then we'll ship the remaining orders on Tuesday and uh, we, we should be we should be uh, seamless you know we should be able to to not have to delay the orders because the worst case scenario would have kind of been like oh you know uh, we, we're gonna have to wait until next week to send you guys the rest of your orders that were placed but I think we should be fine so I don't know if we're gonna be filming uh, kind of a well I probably will film uh, a, a me vlog and show you guys the new stuff that came in this week but it might not be until like monday tuesday or wednesday uh so yeah and i said it in last week's vlog like if you guys want stuff for fourth of july last week was the week to order because there's a very you're not going to get it before fourth of july you're not at this point uh you guys got to understand the holiday shipping and with what's going on with the freezer here it's e even if we didn't have any freezer issues even if we sent your order out on monday <laughs> You still might not get it before 4th of July. So we can't we can't guarantee stuff like that. That's why we said to order last week. But uh, yeah, let me, uh, shit, do I have some batteries? Maybe I'll just call this guy and ask if, uh, maybe he's not, maybe he said he was coming to get the scissor lift today, but maybe he's not. So uh, maybe I can use it to change the smoke alarms tomorrow or get my 
buddy to help me change the smoke alarms. So I don't like going up on this stuff and I don't really know how it works. So freezer spray foamed. Now we just have to, uh, we have to order the, the new units from the refrigeration company. And then maybe the, the week or two after 4th of July, we'll get an entirely new freezer unit put in. And then we won't have to worry about anything else. So I'm gonna do a little work today, show my guys some stuff, but I'll see you guys for the, the vlog video that we do.